Monday. Happy Monday. So we have got the one, the only Donna Dewberry. That's why you guys are all here. So she's going to teach you to paint this beautiful spring floral wreath in just about an hour. If you guys have questions, let me know in the chat and I can relay them over to Donna. I'm here to answer any questions and help you guys. So without further ado, Donna, take it all away. Right. I'm going to come in and turn your record off and you can keep going. Okay, sounds good. Hello, hello. I'm so thrilled to be painting this wreath with you guys today. And I want to share with you that if you're out there and you've never been able to paint before, you are going to so love doing simple strokes that actually look like something when you're done. And so the first thing I want to tell you is I absolutely love the paint we're using. It's a multi-surface paint. So not only can you paint this wreath on canvas, but you can do it on glass, wood, metal, even fabric. So it's really fun. You use different mediums and we're gonna use floating medium when we work on this canvas. Now, this is a 10 by 10 canvas and it's a wrapped canvas, so about that shape. And what I wanted you to know is that you can base coat it. And if you base coat it white, with multi-surface, there's a sealer in it. So it gives you a nice smooth finish. And if you are not liking your stroke, you could like wipe it off and it would still be okay. So that's the plus about base coating. But let me tell you what I do is I grab the white canvas and I start painting. So, um, so that's maybe not a good example, but that's what I do. And I was just having fun uh, thinking about this month and how how sweet and pretty this would be in a bathroom, a guest bedroom, just someplace special for you by a lamp. And so I am thrilled to be sharing some strokes with you today. One stroke painting is blending, shading, and highlighting in each stroke. And so this is our, our kit that we've got with the paint colors that um, I listed for you. But what I want you to see is I've got this in my double loader and I have put floating medium in the middle. And what's going to happen here is that I have our greens, which we're going to use a little bit later. But the colors I want you to start with is we have cardinal red and we have pink. This is bright pink. All right. And it's kind of like a neon color, more like a gel. And then we have the perfect purple and wicker white. So that's what we're going to start with. And I'm going to use um, the Michaels seven piece brush set. Um, because that's what's in the store and I need to use those for all my one stroke followers. Just make sure that um, you know which brushes that we're using today. These actually have a grip on them, which is kind of nice. Now, what I want to do is the first thing is I'm going to take this piece of paper and let's do a couple of strokes on here just so you see it not on the canvas. All right. So I did take and grab two colors here the colors next to each other, which is the bright pink and the cardinal red. And I want it to be lighter. Now I can't, I'm gonna pick up some white. If I just use the white with the bright pink, it's not gonna give me much of a color. It's gonna disappear a little bit. But when you put this bright pink on top of the stroke afterwards, wow, it makes it amazing. So what I'm doing is I'm working the white end to get down to, um, it's like a mauve pink color. Okay, so that's one color. I'm gonna take and wipe some of that off. Now, I didn't, I failed to tell you that you take this brush, you put it in water, you lay it on the paper towel, let the water run out, but we are not painting with water. So I want you to make sure that you understand. We're using the floating medium when we need, when we feel like we need water. This is like, uh, this helps your painting feel like butter when you're stroking. And so what's going to happen here is that I'm going to um, use this fluff. This is the fluff that's inside paint with no pigment in it. So are we able to You're see? good. I'm going to actually flip your camera around because we are upside down. Oh. So you can keep talking. Okay. Hi, guys. It's just me. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to take this color. Is there something in there? And I'm going to grab a little bit of the perfect purple and white. Is that better? I hate doing this during a class, you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, show it again. That is, so it's not in, um, no, it's in portrait, yep. not landscape for okay. some reason now. Okay. 
So I'm going to wait to do the stroke yep, real quick. Yeah, give me one second here. Everybody can see my face. That's what they're looking at. That's not good. <laughs> There's Donna. Hold on, you guys. Somebody said it was upside down. Is that? Right. No, you're sideways. I know. I don't know why. All right, you guys, bear with me. Okay, so so what we have is we have bright vivid colors with one stroke painting, you're multi-loading the brush. And so usually I use white, white's very important, but it's lighter colors with darker colors. And so if you wanted, you could use any color you want. If you wanted yellow and uh, pretty like Texas yellow rose, then you would not use, um, a light yellow, you're gonna use like a daffodil yellow and maybe even some yellow ochre. Is that right now? I don't know, let's try. Chanel, can you try that one? No, we're sideways. Yeah, it's still sideways. I don't know why. Sorry, I was trying to um, fix it for everyone and I made it worse. So if I'm looking at, turn it to yourself like this and then make it work like that. That's Here we go. Is that better? It's now on landscape. There we go. Um, can you turn it around so it's just face it? It's just the yeah. other way. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. Oh my goodness. I, you guys, sorry. I promise you this has not happened before. This is John. All John right. All right. All right. We're, we're back in business. Yay. Yay. Thanks for fixing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, Sorry, you saw all my face and my hands. <laughs> okay, so so if you wanted, you don't use a light color is what I'm trying to say. So if you wanted a peachy color, you could use a little bit of yellow and a little bit of pure orange and daffodil yellow, pure orange, and then some white. So that's what you're doing. So I just wanted to share that with you. Now I've got this color is drying up here. <laughs> and now I'm going to pick up some purples. And so what I want you to see, all right, just mix whichever color you want. But then I'm going to do purple, which is perfect purple on one side and some white on the other side. Now, this is, oops, so this is what I want to show you right here. This purple one. There we are. Okay. So see this one? Now, I'm going to show you that the back of this, we're going to come right here and we're going to push down and the strokes in the back. So it's kind of like a comma. I'm going to get some more purple and where this is perfect purple. And I'm gonna keep picking up each stroke. I went and picked up more purple. Okay, so it's pressure and lift to the chisel. This is the chisel. So pressure and lift to the chisel. Now, that's exactly what I did here, but I'm showing you how you can lay them different ways. But what's important is that then I flip the brush over. And when we come here in front, we're going to put pressure and left. And so this is what happens when you don't put pressure, then you're just going like this. Okay. So if your flower petals looking like that, I want you to understand that this is the key pressure and then stand up to the chisel. So we start all strokes on the chisel and end on the chisel. So if I'm going to come right here, I would put a little bit of angle and then come instead of just flat. See, that makes it look better. So look at this. That makes it look kind of flat, like how much better it looks at an angle. And see, this is the same size from there to there because we didn't put pressure and lift. So that's the most important thing about what I'm teaching you today to get all these pretty colors, okay? So if you could practice that a little bit on the side, that would really help you. Now, what I wanna share with you is that I kind of penciled in just a little bit here, but it, well, you're not gonna be able to really see it, but I just wanted to make sure um, that it didn't go crazy and get too big. <laughs> but what I want you to see is that I'm gonna go around and be about two fingers away, all the way around. And you can take, I usually use, where did I put it? I, oh, I usually use chalk, but it's white. So I can use a colored chalk whichever I want like that. The other thing is, I, like I said, I used a pencil, but one thing that happens is I could just pick out one color and say right here is gonna be this flower, right here is gonna be a smaller one, and then a bigger one right here, 
with any color you want, but you know, having chalk or pencil, you can take it off, okay? Now I'm gonna do a triangle. And what I want you to see is the first triangle is, here we are, we've got this big purple flower, which I did first. And then I did right over here. And instead of doing another big one, I did two medium ones, all right? So one, two, three, and there's your triangle. And then I turned it around and then I did another triangle, okay? And another triangle. So that's gonna help you just kind of see it because most asked questions is, where do I put the leaves? Where do I put the flowers? I wanna know without a pattern because I really like not to use a pattern. I have a couple of projects coming up next month where I did sim patterns just so that you could see if that helps you some, but I don't usually do patterns just to let you know. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna come right here and we're gonna put pressure and the back petals should look darker. All right, so I've got the pink in here, my pink mix. I've got the purple and remember purple one side, white on the other, but we're putting the purple side down. Push and stand up. And I'm gonna do more purple. This is not quite as dark as I made my original, but there we go. All right, so, <clears throat> but remember pressure lift, pressure lift. And you can rewatch this too, cause it's gonna be recorded and on our group. So you can go look at it at any time. All right, so we're gonna push and now we're gonna put the white. So now I'm going to pick up the white. Let me show you. I keep coming here almost every stroke, all right? So now what's gonna happen, let's pick up a whole bunch of white. I've got all that color, I do not wash the brush. I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, okay? So I want the dark in the back. I want you to see, can y'all see the dark? Yeah, right perfect. There? Thanks for lifting that up, people were asking. Oh, they're asking? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay. See, I read y'all's mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what we want to do, that's what I say when I'm watching these sometimes. Why don't y'all get closer? <clears throat> All right. So look, if I'm not happy with this and I want it to, I can come back here and put a few more strokes and I can come around this way and around this way. Well, now I'm gonna come back in here with just some white and just make it a little brighter white. See that? There. And it's easy, pressure lift. Now I did not tell you guys I'm using, what is this number? This is a half inch. I'm using, that's usually like my 16, but they're all made different, so. All right, so there we are a little bit of purple, okay? So I started with the purple and then I decided I'm gonna go over here and do the mauve pink. And then, and by the time I got through guys, I did all this pink and I needed to bring in some more purple. So then that's when I put these little touches of purple. But, and I also put some purple into the classic green leaves. So it just warmed it all up. Okay, so now this is your next big one, remember? We're gonna come right there. Okay, and we're back to the cardinal red and the bright pink, okay? All right, now on this one, I've got to get some white and we've got to make this look more muted. Okay, now remember I said it's more like a dusty rose in the background and then we still need white. So I'm gonna brush some of that off and then grab my wicker white. Okay, so this one up here, let me know if you have questions. All right. They want to know when should they use the floating medium? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good if, answer. If it, if it, okay, right now, if you had, we're doing stroke work. So if you have enough paint on this brush right now, you do not need floating medium. So I want it to feel like butter, but it should feel like butter by you using enough paint on there. See, I have lots of paint on my brush and no medium. All right, so just remember medium is a, is a beauty when you need it, but when you, 
should not be using it. It'll make a muddy mess. So see, I'm just picking up white, picking up white. That's the back petals. Okay, now I wanna leave a little area in here so that I can put yellow centers. So see if it doesn't show, see that's not showing. So I've got to pick up more white and there we go. All right, so right here, more white. And what's gonna happen is when I put the yellow center, it's gonna fill in that gap right there, okay? All right, now what we wanna do is come way over here, put pressure, more white. There we go. And I still get some pink, so it shows up on this white canvas is what I love. All right, so I'm coming down here, pressure, slide across, pressure and slide across. Okay, now then what I did is I came here again to the side and here again, okay? I still have not used medium. I'll tell you when I'm using medium, so that should help you see. All right, <clears throat> so remember I came up here for the same dusty rose color. So look, I'm gonna turn this around. All right, and I have these two kind of going sideways a little bit. Let me see. So if I do this, you'll see right there and right there, and I'm using those same colors, but I'm going to go down to a, just a little bit smaller brush and then push and see if I can get that stroke in there good. All right. So this is what I have. See the dark mauve color in the background? And then I just put a few little white ones on top. All right. So right here, there's two circles there. And I thought I had my pencil here, but we're just gonna keep going because I think y'all will be able to follow me. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up some more of this color, make sure I have plenty of that mauve going here. My mix of cardinal red and bright pink. Okay, so right here, I'm going to do one. Now these are kind of hanging down. Two, pressure and lift. And I put this a little too close, see that? So we'll just come over here and leave a split in between. So if I'm not happy, look, I just come right here and put a little bit more paint so you can see a little bit. All right, so then I'm gonna come right here, pressure and stand up, pressure and stand up. And then see how I'm spreading it a little bit? There you go. All right, so let's look at those. One, two, three, one, two, three, or four. All right, now I'm gonna just grab white, okay? So what you're hoping for when you're right here is that you're gonna stroke right down and lift. And I'm gonna stroke right here and lift, which I'm gonna put that yellow right in the middle. I keep going over and getting white. There. And white here. Okay. Are they able to see okay? Yeah, holding it up like that's great. People wanna see the detail. So perfect. Okay, so I'm putting um, a couple of lower petals. All right, so I picked up more white and I'm gonna push and lift. But what's nice is that because I've got the pink in there, guys, you're getting some shading when I push the pressure. Now, no pressure, no blending. If you don't have pressure, you're not gonna see those pink colors popping through. See that right there? And the beauty of this is, look, I can come back over here and look, was a really great white stroke back over here. All right. And even on this, when I'm coming up, so right here, I do have a couple that are going to come up here and up there. Okay. Thank you guys for joining us today. Yeah. I have, I have, um, now when I'm looking at this, I've got my triangle. Now, do you see the triangle? And sometimes the triangle is not a large flower. 
Sometimes it's two little ones that were kind of the same uh, composition, but also it could just be all pink and then all purple in a triangle. All right, so that's gonna help you. And I've got my hands on here, so ignore my spots, okay? All right, so next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna start introducing a little bit of the bright pink, but I'm going to come back here again get some of this mauve color and I have a couple of little ones right here so I'm using the same brush I didn't tell you which brush I'm sorry this is a number 10 all right so I'm going to come right here and do the same kind of thing I was doing these are hanging down this is kind of going up all right and then this one's facing the other way I'm coming a little too low because I've got one that's got to fit here. There we go. All right, this is your number 10, a little bit smaller than these guys. All right, and so same thing again, I can still have this pink and grab white. All right, so you can do one major one here, maybe one major one here, but then this is what I want you to see. I can't hold that and hold it up too, so all right. So I want you to see right here, we're curving. And I'm on the chisel kind of curving. And then I can bring one from there. So this to me was just a, a dreamy soft color and this mixture, which I really like what it turned out to be. And so Winston's can... mom, Donna said, do you turn the brush when you lift it? My petals look like an 80s hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> who said that winston's mom okay all right so when i am bringing this up there's two things one is you don't want it flat and the second one is as you're doing this as you're doing this i'm trying to be at an angle not flat remember so I'm going, I call it a crooked T, all right? So if you're here and you put pressure, then all you're gonna do is stand up to the chisel. So push and stand up to the chisel. So practice that, push and stand up to the chisel. Now, let me show you again what I'm saying. A crooked T means it's a T like this instead of a T, I'm sorry, this paper, I'm trying to hold it up in the air and it's just, flipping. Okay, see that? It's a regular T. There's a crooked T. All right, so what helps you is that if you start your chisel right there and put pressure and then stand up. Okay, so when you push down, just stand up. So what you're going to do is this is what people tend to do. They're doing this and they come out here. So you're gonna, this is the tip of the leaf. So you wanna go out here to the tip of the leaf, okay? I hope that helps some, maybe that will. Yeah. All right, so now the other flowers that we're putting in here in between, I'm gonna add some neon to those a little bit more. So I think you'll like the way that's gonna turn out. So I just keep doing my mix right here because when you thin it out like this guys, it'll, it'll dry out. So you don't want to do too much in advance, okay? All right, so I've got one more here, which is push, lift. One of the things that you can do, guys, is come here and say, here's my center, and here's my center, and here's my center. And what I want to do on each one of these is come to that center, push and lift, just like I told you with that crooked T push on the chisel and lift. So even if you just do all chisel strokes, I'm gonna pick up white and let me show you what happens here. Even if, let's say I do this one, all right, but then all the rest are up on the chisel of the brush like you're doing a daisy, it will still look pretty, okay? Let's see, then push, lift, push left. All right. So if I was just doing like a daisy stroke, let's, let's do this one right here. And I'm going to pick up neon pink. 
All right, so I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. And then let's put, let's grab some white. Now I had a little bit of that red still on there. Look, I'm on the chisel. I'm on the chisel right up here. See, push and then stand up. Are you guys having fun yet? Yeah, they want to know if you drew it out, Donna, before. And so I you did hear. kind of, so they wanted to know if you had drawn out your design and I, you kind of put some placeholders in there. Well, the reason I did that, cause you know, guys, I usually don't. But the thing is, is that you guys, um, I didn't want to mess up in front of you guys. <laughs> so I kind of, that's, that's what I was sharing with you. If I took my chalk and I put a circle in a circle, just like that of where I want it to be. And, but when I'm freehand painting it, all I do is what I just told you. I think that, all right, I want this one, this one, and these two to be my triangle. And then I have another triangle, which is gonna be right here and another triangle that can be there. And you just keep laying those out. So these were flowers that were tilting around. And this was actually like um, some cruel work or something. And some, some that were in Europe that I really liked was laid out like this. And I thought it was really pretty. So don't be tough on yourself. Just it can, like I said, you can, even just paint daisies and still get this look, whatever flowers you put. Sometimes people just say, I put rosebuds there. Now, right now it doesn't look like the complete wreath I want, but you'll see it come to life when we start pulling these little guys up to that center, these little guys up to that center. Can you see that? That's all the bright pink and I still have the small brush. All right, so now in between there, I'm gonna grab the white. Thank you guys, those are some nice little comments. I appreciate it. All right, so I do have lots of practice strokes that are on YouTube and it's just a free little thing is tutorials and they help you with some of these petals if you wanna practice and then come do more. All right, so look. Push, lift, and maybe we ought to just do practice strips here sometime so you can feel what we're doing. There we go. Uh, can you see that? Yes, please. Did you see that? Yeah. So what size brush are you using, Donna? <laughs> this was that 10. Number 10. 10. And is it a flat or a chisel? Oh, it's a flat. Yes. Okay. So if Thank they don't you. have a number 10, what would you recommend? Um, do they have a 12 or um, a 12 is usually in most of those packs. I would use a 12 if I didn't have a 10. A six is too small. An eight, I don't know if anybody has an eight. Okay. When I was at Michael's, there were a couple of different packs. All right, so see, I put a little bit of this bright pink guys a little bit and a couple of different one two three and and just so it has that little bit of bright there and i'll show you later why i'm doing that okay so whatever flowers you decide but try to use these soft colors all right and this stroke is an easy stroke but you have to practice some and like i said the key is we don't want this. We don't want these straight petals. Now, when I'm doing a daisy, I am pushing and I'm standing up to a point. You can do daisies to be skinny or you can put pressure, a lot of pressure and stand up. And so you could do any of these petals like that if you're not comfortable with doing the stroke that I just showed you. And that is pressure and lift to the point. It's like a comma, look, one way or this way, left or right, okay? So that should help you be able to get to the point you wanna be. Okay, so now let's put some green in here, all right? So we have some little fillers and different strokes I'm gonna use, but I'm gonna wash my brush out and there is in this seven piece set, 
they do have the tin, which I'm going to use for some of the little leaves, but there also is, this should be the six, all right? So I'm going to wet it, lay it on the paper towel. And now I haven't had to use the medium. I thought I would, but we'll see. Um, you might not have to. So I'm going to, on, on the smaller brushes that are 12, I might do all the dark and then do a side stroke. Look, I'm gonna pat this down so it goes flat. It's not going flat. All right, so I'm gonna side stroke the second color. Lots of times that second color is white. All right, and back here. Now I need a little bit darker green. So I'm gonna pick up some of that perfect purple and work that into the classic green and then get some lime green. Classic green, lime green. I don't think I told you that yet. All right, so now what we wanna do, we wanna come right here on the chisel, just like that stroke we've been doing. And we're going to <clears throat> come around, look at this, one, two, three, some little strokes. All right, so we're gonna make this wreath come into a circle, which we don't have yet. <clears throat> So this part's easy because all you're going to do is go to the bottom of each one. See right there and curve it across right here, little chisel. And I keep going and picking up more of the dark color. I'm not worried about that, uh, the lime green very much yet. Let's see that. Now you could use the small little liner, but it just takes longer than if you use uh, this flat brush. So this six flat, you're using the chisel of it to do these strokes. All and if right. you don't have the exact brush, just a small flat brush will work perfect. Yeah, just a very small flat brush. That's right. Okay, grab the bottom of each one and come around so it's going to end up being a circle. All right, so this little guy, am I up close enough for them to see? Yeah, no, that's perfect how you're holding it. I know it's not comfortable, but I think it's really helpful. <laughs> I've, but I've got to see, so I'm just trying to do. Okay. Hope you lifted your weights. You got to hold that canvas up. Yeah, okay. So for right now, we're going to see the circle or you can make it a heart. There's all kinds of ways that you can do it. All right, so at this point, I kind of attached where I wanted it to go. And then I'm gonna go back to my tin, all right? So the first thing I did was I'm adding purple. So this is perfect purple on the tin and go over here and just grab, just like we did the flower. Uh, why aren't questions being answered, Miss Kira? <laughs> oh, well, we were answering if I missed someone. Sorry. Um, I'm trying to answer the best that I can. So Donna is, I'm trying to give suggestions also if you don't have exactly what you need. So Donna um, is using, I'm not really sure, Pat, what you need. Let us know. What, what were you trying to find out, honey? I'm not really what, sure what she needs. What they need? Last lots of people chatting here so if I miss something let me know well sometimes they chat to each other so it yeah. makes it hard to wants to oh, know if Pat can wanted use. to know if you could use tube acrylics well you could absolutely use tube acrylics but we are using folk art multi-surface so we would recommend using the folk art um it's our product and we love it it is a high quality acrylic paint so well, let me tell um, you my the the thing here said Kira that yep. is important is that this paint is perfect for my technique because if you get it too pasty or too thin, the problem is that's the reason I came the plaid because they have the paint that works best for one stroke painting. And my favorite, all time favorite is multi-surface because I don't have to have five different types of paint unless I want glitter or some kind of specialty paint. What this does for us guys, is it gives us instantly out of the bottle so we don't have to blend and make anything happen so that we can double load and we have this, this great color so quickly and all these wonderful colors. So let me share with you too though, 
I am touching on the chisel, pushing down and standing up. There y'all remember that I just taught you that on the pedals, but now I'm going reverse into a leaf. It's the same stroke, all right? So this, this has a sealer in it. So it's good for glass, metal, ceramic, and many other surfaces. And so I, when I'm crafting, I want to do something I enjoy that's not stressful. I don't want to have to um, worry about all the other elements. I want to be able to create and make greeting cards, make something quick and easy. And you can see when I'm stroking, it's really quick and easy. But I'm just showing you how to layer one stroke on top of another stroke. Yeah. And so Donna is using Craft Smart brushes. Again, I'm getting private messages and group messages. So she's using Craft Smart brushes, flat brushes, and a variety of small to medium sizes. So if you don't have the exact pack, don't worry. Um, and let's see what else people are asking. Um, the palette she's using, it is a double loader palette that Donna designed. Um, it is not available at Michael's, but it is available on Plaid Online. Um, but Michael's carries all these great brushes and the folk art um, paint, which is amazing. And what kind of paper? So if you're making cards, Donna, you just buy like cards, pre-made like cards, blank ones that are at Michael's. You can buy packs of them. And I, the folk art those are the ones that works great on those. Yeah, those are the ones I like that are prepackaged ready for you with envelopes to match. And yeah. so they just makes it so quick when you can go grab those and start painting. Okay, so now you see it's harsher, it's all dark. See that? So now um, I need that dark to put a pretty light in here now. Okay, and be nice, the classes are free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all right, so here we go. <laughs> All right, so before I go to the light, I am going to take this little teeny brush. Let's see what it is. I usually use a one script liner. Okay, there's no number on it. Okay, it's a little teeny liner, itty bitty. And so I use the handle of the brush many times to dot with, but so you can use the handle of it. This is daffodil yellow. Okay, all right, so. All right, you could use this handle like this to dot in here. And I'm gonna come up close so you can see it. But what I thought was nice about this is that when you're holding this up here, <laughs> I am gonna just pick up the liner and I'm gonna do these little dots. Am I there so y'all can see? Little teeny dots. And I'm coming in between those two petals I left on a bunch of these, I left, left space. So you can come right in here. And so this, all these little teeny delicate little details you do changes the whole look of the flower. All right. It brings so it to life. I, huh? It really brings them to life. I also, like somebody just mentioned, I use cardstock and I fold it in half and then find good envelopes for it. But you can use beautiful scrapbooking papers that Michaels has. I do a lot of those, fold them and then paint on a, 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 a textured, not a textured, but a pattern underneath that would look cute on a card. And then I do my painting on top of that. So it looks like I put stripes or an all over background. So see how much that changed it already? All right, so we've got a couple more steps that are important here. Now I'm gonna come in with the six flat and I'm gonna get my lime green. Now that's all I'm putting on here is lime green. All right, so now what's gonna happen is I want you to see that you can do little strokes with the lime green here. So look, I can push and curve out, push and they're little comma strokes. Okay, so what I want you to think about is think about just doing little cards for somebody and just put two of these blossoms on it even. Think about something that will help you, make you practice more 
because you're painting them and you're giving them away. All right. That's what I love about doing a couple of strokes on a card. And also, if you make a habit of taking um, your leftover paints and just painting on a couple of cards, and when it's that time that, that you need a card for somebody, you can run in and look at your stash. And that's what I paint a lot of leftover paint up and put it in my husband's stash because he sends all the birthday cards. There we go. Now look push on the chisel and stand up and they're comma strokes, okay? Do you see that? Now see that kind of lightens it up a little bit, right? And you might even go right where the dark is. And I don't mind ridges. I think ridges made it look good. I didn't know that ridges were not a good thing when I started painting. I think it looks fun, like textured. All right, so. You see that if you practice it all, that this would be really fun. That's what we're hoping. We're hoping one stroke painting, you blend, shade, and highlight with each stroke. And so it is right here. It is fun. I've done face painting paint. I've done all kinds of paint. So I just want you to know my go-to personally is the multi-surface and um, the plaid paint, but I love that I can take and put it on glass, make, I do all kinds of glass painting. This paint is a little matte compared to our enamel paint. So, yep. but it's, it's wonderful. And top rack of the dishwasher, it's really wonderful. Okay. All right. So those, um, I can also real quick show you. Oh, I did put a couple little purple ones in there. All right, but I want you to see that I'm using this itty bitty teeny liner that's in there. And I like to come around and make a little curl. But when I'm doing this, I'm using thick paint because it, it doesn't take this, this too small to do much of an inky. Okay, my two script liner that I use a lot, you can inky that, but this doesn't hold that much, but it makes a cute little curl. All right, so every bit, this is what somebody's told me before who watched me doing a the demonstration. They went, okay, I thought that looked good then. But then you come back and I'm thinking, stop, don't put any more. And instead of making it heavier, this, do you see how each step made it lighter? And instead of, remember the dark green, even though we're adding more, it gets lighter if you're using the right colors and all. So see that, we're gonna make curls. Add a few of those in here. It's truly magic, Donna, like watching it happen. Thank you. But isn't it kind of fun because you can lose yourself into it and that's what yeah. we want. I tell people <laughs> painting and, and relaxing and painting is better than drugs because you lose yourself into it and you don't think about your woes. All right, so look, we're picking up the perfect purple. Now, remember I told you we have purple. Now, no more purple in the whole painting. Well, so except a little bit in leaves. So then I had to come in here and do like a three stroke, just like we kind of did before. And I'm gonna balance it across here and then put some yellow by that. And the last thing I'm gonna do, which is really gonna be fun, we got time still. Are y'all having a good time at all? Yeah, everyone, lots of great comments. Nobody's looks like Donna's exactly, but everybody is painting along. Well, listen, I like it when it looks like yours. Yeah. It's not, I mean, when you wake up tomorrow and look at your piece and you say, You're gonna oh. love it. Yeah, right. When you, when you're, I tell people when they're sitting next to their mamas in class or their, when their husbands sit next to their wives. They go, but mine doesn't look like, oh, oh, this is what happened. The ones who know how to paint a little bit more will say, you're doing that wrong. You're doing that wrong. And I go, cut it out. You can't say that to them. That's their piece. So sometimes just look at your piece after the painting fairies come at night. And yeah, you'll go, wow, that wasn't too bad, right? Okay, so I'm going to pick up yellow. And I came over to these purples and I added the handle of the brush this time, dip, dot, dip, dot, 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 okay? And so then that still makes it lighter. 
I'm making myself crazy with the spot I put on here. So clean your hands as you go. <laughs> it's stuck on this canvas and it won't come off. Okay, so I have to put a little white spot there. All right, so I want you to see, see how the bright yellow starts popping in here. Oops, wrong way. There we go. All right, so I did one other thing. And I found spots where it looked like a little bit of wisteria, but I don't have a brush that's that small here. So what I wanted to do was I'm going to mix this pink with some red. This is bright pink and cardinal red. And I'm making a, a mixture there. So don't, don't try to dip dot dry paint like all this other's dry. So that's why I made a little puddle of this. Now I'm gonna come into a spot like here and I'm gonna dot a bunch of the dark first, which is closer to the mauve color I was talking about, the muted pink. All right, and I found three places that that would look good. All right, remember my triangle? So if I had this here, where would my triangle go? Are y'all looking? I would have another one over here somewhere. All right, now we're not gonna stop at this dark spot here, but I want you to see, I want it to look like it's hanging. All right, and guess what else does this really good? Q-tips. I make a bundle of Q-tips with a hair tie and then tap, 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 and it makes a pretty little cluster. All right, one more place. So one, two, three, see the triangle? So let's come right up here and do, this just gave you a little bit darker pink in here. And then all the others I've done are going to be the bright pink, okay? So I am gonna put some fresh bright pink because I've messed that one up quite a bit. So this double loader usually helps you when you're using larger brushes and you're loading from a 12 and smaller work really good. Oh, uh, and larger, not smaller. Okay, so now we're gonna get this neon pink. It is wonderful therapy. I tell people it's better than drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are feeling down or just thinking about everything that's awful that might be going on, sometimes we don't feel good about ourselves, which is crazy because God bless us all to have talents of some kind. And sometimes you beat yourself up over stuff that does not matter in the law. I mean, we can't tell you that because that's what you think. But when you're creating, it's beautiful. It, may, it does something to you. It gives you these great enzymes that, you know, lift you up, that makes you smile. How many, I want you to see, I think about the time you've tried doing a craft or painting and you sit back and you smile because you go, wow, that looks good. That is that positive reinforcement that you get by creating, okay? So see how that bright pink just changed that whole look? I know it's far away, so I'm gonna bring it up and show it to you. All right, I'm not done, but I'm done with that, that um, mix. So see the darker pink, and then I put the, it's a neon like gel, but it's called bright pink, okay? I always move it the wrong way. Okay, so can y'all see there's three of those? Now, the next three are just the, watch this, just, well, there's more than three, but see, I put all these, just the bright pink, and I thought I might've touched with a little bit of white, all right? So here we are, just the bright pink. And so I just found little spots in here, and it's dip dot, but what I want you to see is, watch this, one, two, three, four, you can keep going and they get smaller and smaller. Okay. Oh, and some people are asking about the floating um, medium, Donna. Yeah, they purchased. I didn't yeah. <laughs> okay. So I am going to show you in just a minute how I would use that floating medium if I had needed it in here. All right. For one thing, when I was doing the leaves, I will just show you in just a minute real quick. All right, so I can still put a little bit more of that in there. All right, so for instance, I wanted some purple leaves because that's another way to bring the purple. So I can pick up some of the 
perfect purple. And if I want it to look like a shadow leaf, I took off the purple on the paper towel and I'm gonna work this in. There's numerous ways to use the medium. This is one way, all right? So then I'm going to paint with this. So I can show you that I'm gonna come right here and that's too much. So I wipe that off on the paper towel. Okay, so watch, watch what happens here. All right, one, two, this was with the medium and you're just getting shadow leaves, like right here and here. Can they see that? Yep, perfect. All right, God, so, it is this, so beautiful. This is shadow leafing and because we needed purple, you know, because I, my purple didn't show as much in my dark green. All right, but see how pretty that is. Now that's, you could say, I want this to be pink. I want this to be that limey green, but it's just translucent. Like when I paint grapes, I do these shadow grapes underneath the real grapes. See that? So here again, I'm doing something, adding more to my piece, but see it made it lighter. Too bad that won't cover my spot. <laughs> okay, there we go. Like look at it over here without and look at it here with. All right, then I wanna show you on a piece of paper how I, I use um, the floating medium when I'm doing stroke work, okay? Is that fun? Okay, so let's, let's look at another stroke here. When you're doing, just think about this. When you're doing stroke work, you put enough paint that you don't need to use medium if you're working it right, okay? But let, let's move this out of the way and let me show you. All right, so I'm going to pick up these two colors, maybe even some yellow, go back and forth and work it in, okay? Now I'm gonna be on paper, which is gonna be dry. And one, I might have all this paint on here, but it still might give me a dry edge. So the first thing I do is I dip into here uh, and work it in. And then this is what I'm gonna show you. When I come here, I'm gonna have two lines and make this into a Y. I'm gonna go one, two, three, scrub and slide. Now this makes that medium makes this feel like butter like you're sliding and with butter and making this nice stroke, okay? Now, if I pick up more paint, but sometimes I'm doing this and even though I have all that paint, I have this edge that's dry. So if this edge <clears throat> was dry, I would just dip that one edge that's dry into the medium and then it mo goes really smooth for me again. Okay, so, all right. So look at this, I want you to see that we are getting all the shades from this classic green. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white, add it in here, but now this is getting a little pasty so I can go get some medium and work it in. But we were just doing single strokes. Remember, we were just doing a single stroke like that. So, so that's going to have enough paint on it if you pick enough paint up. All right. I want to pull the camera down. <laughs> okay. So see that? <laughs> All right. So it's a habit because my when I'm doing my work at home, I pull the camera down a lot. So we are kind of stuck in the spot here but at least we're here for you guys. I hope you are having a good time. Yeah, so everyone's really enjoying and we um, just posted, Chanel just posted the link of when you can, when and how you can watch it after. So if you wanna go back and paint along again, you're able to do that. So is that on Michael's or is that in a couple places? Yeah, or? so it'll be on Michael's. So the link is right in the chat. So it's available on Michael's and their community classroom page. So it'll be available about 24, 48 hours after. So you can go back and watch when you have time. And then we also actually put those on our Plaid YouTube channel also. So two great ways to find it. Okay, so now, uh, thank you. I wanna thank Michael's for having us on. It's, it's a thrill to be, 
uh, meeting newbies that haven't painted with me before and sharing my love for one stroke painting and um, my love for folk art. Now watch this. When we come around, see this right here is like a fan. Okay, can you see that? It's like yeah. a fan. All right, so then after I see the fan, I start standing up, standing up and sliding to that tip that I just showed you before, okay? So now if I move over here on that line, I can push, <laughs> I can't do it up in space. <laughs> All, right. All right, so look, I need some lighter color so y'all can see it. But look, what's fun is watch, I'm gonna put some pink in here. Okay, and then I can roll the brush and get fancy on you too. Okay, can y'all see? So awesome. I gotta do that over, but this is the beauty. You can do it right over and have that pink leaf curled. Do you see that? Oh, that's so pretty. Thank you. So it's multi-layering, multi-loading. Um, your brush with multiple colors. I did a painting today that was four colors and it did a cabbage rose wisteria and leaves. But I'm, I'm just sharing with you that you can do just two colors or you can make a multitude of other colors. Now, what's wonderful are these neon shades like this bright pink, because look how that changed the whole piece by adding the pinks in here. Are we done? We got, are we, did I use up all the time? <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're ready right in an hour and we got an extra lesson on these beautiful leaves. I just love the leaves even without the flowers. I know, isn't that fun? Yeah, so I love it. A lo lot of people came to my technique to learn the leaves, but I want, I want to show you one last thing, if that's okay. Um, yeah, we're getting that, bonus, bonus content. That, <laughs> that same stroke, that same stroke that we just did with the leaves, okay? I'm gonna pick up this paint in here, right in my double loader. I pick it up in here and then I come over here and work it in. And I just want you to see that we are going to do, we're going to make a little scrubby motion. Now, this is perfect because it's dry. All that paint on there and I still have it dry just on the white corner. So dip the white corner, work it in. And then when I come back here, you're gonna see that we're gonna get all these pretty shades and it's gonna move really soft for me. Okay, so, so each one of those is that shell, that fan stroke, all right? So then what happens is that I, all I have to do is go pick up the fresh white all right, I dip it in a little bit of white. Let me show you. Dip and then flatten it right here. And we go to the next stroke. So we're painting wet on wet. All right, so I'm gonna come right here and go up and over. And then I'm gonna make a U. I'm gonna dip more white. So you see it, see how we see it? More white. And then I'm gonna go right around here. A little bit more. All the way around. And so see, I've just, the reason I can do wet on wet is because the consistency of this paint. Okay, now. All right, so to have the right brushes and the right paint makes a really big difference in doing one stroke painting. So I just want to share that with y'all. And it makes everything easier. You just did a whole other painting, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just think about this. And so if you're taking, if you're taking this, this is a three quarter brush and we're gonna just put, look how fast that rosebud is. So you're using the same color, the three quarter inch brush. And I wanna thank you guys for being on. Please let Michaels and us know if you're liking what I'm sharing with One Stroke Painting. And if you want to see more, 
All right, we're excited. I'm supposed to be back tomorrow at three. So yeah. I would love to, and we're gonna paint on glass and do tulips, okay? Not as many strokes as we did tonight, but um, they're gonna, I'm gonna do a good lesson on tulips for you on painting on glass. So thank you so much. I appreciate Michaels and, and Kira for having me come to Plaid and I came up to Atlanta to rainy cold weather, but it's worth it when I get to see you guys. And um, I appreciate it. Thank you for being yeah. on tonight, guys. Yeah, you guys have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Donna. And thank you, guys. Practice. Everybody keeps saying practice. <laughs> yeah, practice, practice. Bye, guys. Keep have a great night. Yeah. yeah. Bye.